Hi, my name is Bonda Lee, and I'm the marketing coordinator at Brainswood Dental Inc. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Dennis Sudo. Dennis is our partner in Japan, and is a member of Daishin Trading Company and Core 3D Japan. So Dennis has a really good understanding of the dental industry over in Japan, and I'm watching this opportunity to get a little bit more insight and ask you a few questions. Sure. All right. Um, before we get started, can you give a little bit more information on what's happening in the industry right now and some of the background on dentistry in Japan? Sure. Uh, the industry itself is it's, it's a chaining industry from the analog to the digital. Um, and so it's, it's a small paradigm shift that is happening. And so roughly, you know, um, there's roughly 19,000 dentists and 35,000 labs to facilitate the 125 million people that are based in Japan. I've heard there's a problem with data archiving and the security of patient information in Japan. Can you explain to us how dentists are archiving patient data right now and how they're sharing that information amongst themselves? Right. So the government hasn't really implemented a nationwide system for patient data archiving. And so what the clinics have done are very silo-based. So uh, a clinic may create their own way of archiving through Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office. And so um, there is no nationwide regulation for okay. data archiving. Um, how are they communicating that data? Are they using email or phones? The communication between the dentist and the lab is mostly by phone. Okay. Um, and through some email at this time, but again, with emails, um, it is very hard to describe in words what they would like. And so, by phone, it may be, it's a little bit easier. Recently, there was a really good article on cloud computing and dentistry in Japan. I was on uh, Dr. Bike Husband, and I was wondering, what did you think of the article, and do you think the industry in Japan is ready for such technology? Right. Um, with cloud computing in Japan, it is very, um, it's been adopted very well by the Japanese people, and so, you know, um, major corporations are shifting to cloud-based just because of the added extra costs of it maintaining your own servers within the company. And so the future is obviously cloud-based uh, data archiving. Right, good. Um, I know you've been using and recommending Crystal for some time. Uh, what are your, some of your favorite features and uh, what do you think of the product? Myself personally, I love Brightscript just because of the first, uh, the aesthetics of it. It's very user-friendly, um, very easy to navigate within the system. Uh, my two favorite features are the STL viewer where um, you can take an STL file and view the image right within BrightSquid. And also, um, the annotations. Um, you know, in this day and age, um, there should be a system where you can annotate images easily, but in Japan, there is no other system like it. And so, it is a very simple, unique uh, feature, but um, very distinctive in the industry itself. Okay, great. Well, I just wanted to thank Dennis for his time come over to Canada and talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. And uh, hopefully we can do this again soon. Would love to. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Konnichiwa. Watashi wa Vandali Sharon. Brightest with the marketing coordinator desk. Kario Shokai Shimas. Sudo Dennis-san desk. Good job. Good job.